for your top seeded heat in the men's 1500 freestyle. In lane one from Great Britain, Nicholas Granger. In two from Scarlet Aquatics, Joannis Coloni. In lane three from Great Britain, Tom Derbyshire. In lane four, he placed a tenth in this event in the Rio Olympics from Great Britain, Stephen Mill. In lane five from Great Britain, Timothy Shuttleworth. In lane six for Plymouth White Marsh Aquatics. And Ready to cap Bruce the Bruce Arena Pro Swim Series event at Indianapolis with the men's 1500 free. Sun Young, the world record holder. Connor Yeager holds the American record. You look at the lane assignments here. Andrew Abruzzo, Jack Collins, a couple of young Americans in the mix. Stephen Milne, one of the headliners from Great Britain, he'll be in lane number four. Take your mark. So as this race gets underway, Jason Nat Natalie Coglin, happy to be joined by a guest here, the Olympic coach for the United States women in Rio, David Marsh, joining us. David, thanks for taking the time you know we've been talking about swimmers and, and how they process things from Rio and get ready for the run-up right. to Tokyo as the coach you sit down at all and take time to kind of figure out what worked well what went well for you personally as you get ready to gear up for what's next for Team USA well you need to and often that's a mistake we make is not taking time sort of after the season to process it this for the first time ever and I, and I did it after uh, actually hearing Terry once at one of the uh, Terry McKeever at one of our, our national team trips talked about journaling during a trip. And I actually, this is the first time I ever journaled during the Olympics. So when I got back, I've added to it. And it's been one of those things where I've been able to, to kind of reflect uh, you know, in a way of writing it down, looking back and going, well, I forgot all about that. And there's all kinds of little nuances that make the Olympics special. It's usually, and honestly, what you see on TV and what you see in the pool, that's where the medals go. The stories behind the stories are fabulous. And that's what I've been able to kind of reflect on. And this team uniquely, uh, probably more than I've ever seen, was affected by the things behind the scenes. You know, the Elizabeth Beisels, you know, she finished her 4 and I am. And I said, Elizabeth, you okay? You know, fifth place, I know, is satisfactory for you. And she looks up and said, I'm ready for tomorrow. I'm ready to go. And she literally got in the water for the next three days and warmed up with other swimmers just to keep them from getting nervous. I mean, beautiful things like that that, you know, the cameras don't pick up, but they're really what create the chemistry that ultimately creates success. You always think that you're going to remember those little things, uh, and it's, it is so important to write down the details so that you remember what those those little things, those little stories that you think 10 years down the road you're going to remember, and you, you don't. <laughs> no, no, no. And I think you don't know, remember and when we were in the training camp right before the London Olympics, and you were there, and, the, and you and the veteran swimmers that were part of the group had this group of younger swimmers that you really allowed to create their own personalities and you really helped bring that out in them. And I remember you guys doing that in some of the meetings and it was a beautiful thing. And you know, there's, there's, there's a chemistry that can happen in a short time and usually that's a little bit more contrived, but when you have a nice training camp situation, you're eating together, you're living together, you're in a place where sort of the social media is a little bit turned off, uh, pretty, pretty cool things can happen. Well, you said that, you know, chemistry is so important. Chemistry within the Olympic team was really important. You're at Swim Mac, and we all know when there's a quad shift that there is a change of group. Can you talk about your, your new group at Swim Mac? Yes. Generally, Swim Mac with the overall program is carrying on this great tradition of 40 years of being a big club team. Ten years ago, we brought the pro aspect to it where we had uh, Team Elite come to town with the goal of helping the professional swimmers, the swimmers that don't have another place to go. And when we, we did that, it allowed us to uh, bring in role models. And that's been the key, having role models in town in Charlotte, and it's made a big, big difference in the program. The club's gone from being a good program to one of the best. And so I think one of the things I'm looking forward to in the future is more intentionally doing that. Well, here, Andrew Abruzzo of the United States has the lead. A couple of Brits, Timothy Shuttleworth, Tom Derbyshire alongside. More coming up. Yeah. 
swimmers will be competing for a team, or competing for a position to represent Team USA in Budapest later this summer. And then August 23rd through the 28th, the Auditorium here is going to be hosting the 2017 FINA World Junior Swimming Championships. The world's top 18 and under swimmers are going to be here. We're anticipating 1,000 athletes from over 100 countries here in the auditorium for that six-day event. Rizzo in lane six, third, shuttle work, out of lane five.
little bit more, a little over two tenths of a second. Approaching the final 250 meters, the men's 1500 free. Tom Derbyshire of Great Britain really in a battle with American Andrew Abruzzo, an 18-year-old and a 17-year-old dueling. The American in lane number six at the top of your screen, a British swimmer in lane number three. Those two have separated themselves. A little over a tenth lead now for the American as they come down the home stretch. Jason Knapp here with Olympic gold medalist Natalie Coglin. David Marsh so gracious with his time to stick with us through the break. What's your biggest takeaway from this weekend? Anything really catch your eye in this meet here in India this weekend? Well, really, just like uh, this, this likes going on right here. We have Andrew, young 18-year-old, out here getting out ahead. And then you have a uh, really crew of the next wave coming through, starting with Tuner Fly, the Flickinger, and you have go down to, you know, look at uh, Molly Hannes hasn't seen her best breaststroke happen yet. I think Katie, those two are going to keep pushing each other forward. Uh, look at little Michael Andrew. Like, he swam the 50 free last night and then Tuner Nam. What a combination that is. Josh is really at 23, he's young in our sport. Josh is such a student of the sport. He's finding ways to get better. So the neat thing, the neat, the neat thing about this is that the, uh, the setting is relaxing enough to let them kind of perform. There's not a lot of pressure, and yet they're swimming against world-class swimmers. The Great Britain brought 40 swimmers here. China has some of their best swimmers here. It's going to be it's an outstanding setting for them. Well, with about 150 to go, you can see that Abruzzo has made his move and is looking to overtake the lead. You know he trains a lot with Coach Dick Schulberg out there. He ha has already put together a really good 400 free earlier this meet with a 351, and it looks like he's going possibly for the win in this mile. Yeah, Dick's been coaching him with, uh, you know, really uh, – sort of as a freelance coach. He's not necessarily associated with one particular team. It's really a unique setup he's done up there, and, and he continues to make such an impact on our sport. What a man. You know, after losing Bob Gillett recently and, and then Bill Crum actually just the, just yesterday, uh, it's been a, been a tough uh, couple of weeks for USA Swimming, but you know, Dick's still, you know, he's on the deck. He's coaching the heck out of these kids, and look at this young man. Certainly could be pleased with the potential finish for one of his swimmers here, Abruzzo. The lead over a second headed to this final 50. Can he hang on against a couple of Brits giving chase? Derbyshire, the only one that's within striking distance. But Abruzzo looks to have a lot left got in the, the legs. tank. Yep, got those legs, doesn't he? Man, after a mile, you don't think you're going to have that much energy for that last little push. But it looks like he extended his 
lead, and that is incredible. With a personal best of 15, 13, 95, personal best by over two seconds. Sensational swim for Andrew Abruzzo to cap things here in Indianapolis. Get his fifth final of the meet and comes through with a big win here in the mile. Is he happy? I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was a great time. Personal best by over two seconds, but I think, you know, he's still a little tired from, from the know, rest. And, and he's being polite to the rest of the swimmers, you know, not celebrating until everyone's finished. You know, and he's uh, from Dick's program, and he's done a lot of things a lot harder than that. <laughs> so, so he's like, what's the next challenge? I'm young. I'm 18. Ready for the next thing. 1,500 ain't anything. No, nah, not for, not for Dick's, not Dick Schoenberg swimmers. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of teenagers in this race, and Andrew Abruzzo, top of the mark. David, thanks for the time. Good catching yeah, up with yeah, you. Yeah, thanks, guys, and great job this weekend. Thank you. Thanks David Marsh us. with us, helping lead Team USA and the women in Rio. You look at the final results here, and the American Abruzzo beats a handful of Brits there in second, third, and fourth. And again, we heard David's thoughts and what stood out to him while we've got some time here to cap the weekend in Indy. Natalie, what stood out to you? I think hands down it has to be Adam Peaty breaking the U.S. Open record. We got to see a 15.30.